Thanks for, for that introduction. And I, I won't be able to speak as elegantly to family medicine and how important a family doctor is as Dr. Lush did. I think we need to give her a real big applause for her push to get this issue to the forefront. I've been an emergency physician for over 20 years. I started in Ontario working in a tertiary care center there in a pediatric uh, emergency department. And I came to Victoria to over 20 years ago and I've worked in both the Jubilee and the general hospitals here. I've been the lead physician, the chief of the departments of both sites a number of times. And now I'm the lead of the group of the 50 emergency doctors or so that provide emergency care to the District of Victoria, the Island Health Authority, all the way up to the top of the island where the major trauma center that brings things down from there and referral center for the whole of Island Health. Thank you. I've been able to, to see that the backbone of our healthcare system is our family physicians. They, They keep, not patients, they keep their, their patients, their friends, their, they become so close with them, they keep them out of the emergency department. They prevent episodic care that we are now providing all the time. The, the impact on your emergency services is great. It is difficult for us to provide appropriate emergency services when we are overcrowded when we have no beds to see patients. And my shift last night wasn't atypical. I left at three in the morning and both of our departments had a six hour wait. So you're waiting, earlier it was eight, so we did a little bit of good. But that's not unusual and then I, I think to myself, how desperate are people for care when they're willing to sit in one of those little chairs next to somebody who is sick and unwell for eight hours. And most, many of those patients have chronic problems that are either decompensated and now have become complicated and require a lot of care, maybe admission to hospital, maybe it's a cancer that we miss and now they're gonna be end up being past the time to get treatment. Many of them are just looking for a prescription to get filled and they couldn't find one. They've waited for eight hours in the emergency department. And that's not uncommon. We're so overcrowded, I walked into the department last night and one of my colleagues was treating a seizing patient in the hallway. That would be surprising, but it didn't, it didn't really phase me much because it's a common occurrence. Not having the appropriate place to treat critically ill patients because it is, I felt like that frog in a boiling pot of water. It just slowly heats up and it's just, it's become a norm for us. We've learned to adapt and to do our best. I'll give you just a few vignettes over my last week of work that gives you an idea of the impact of not having a family doctor can have on you. Some of them are inconveniences maybe, but I can't believe people do it. You're in your 50s, you've got multiple medical problems, you work hard during the day, you have to have the family to support, and you've been trying to get to a doctor to fill some prescriptions and get some basic longitudinal primary care that would be provided by a family doctor. You've tried walking clinics, you've tried the urgent cares, but by 8 in the morning they're all filled up. You have to go to work, you have to support your life and your family. So you set your alarm clock for three in the morning so you can get out of bed, come wait in the emergency department for four hours to see an emergency physician so you can get to work in the morning. People are doing this on a regular basis, we see that. It's not uncommon. Imagine you're a woman in her 80s, your family doctor is retired two years ago. You haven't been on your medications. And this is a patient that Dr. Yi, who's left, would refer it on to. But a patient that you haven't seen a doctor for two years, you've noticed a lump in your breast. You think you should get it looked at, 
you try to go to a clinic, you can't do it, you're 80, you're 80 years old, mobility's an issue, you can't get up at six in the morning to go to wait in the line for two hours. One month goes by, two months go by, you sort of learn to live with this lump, and then it's a year. You come into the emergency department eventually, you wait eight hours to see an emergency physician and you've got an obvious breast cancer. There's certain things we can do to, to help you along in your journey to get this appropriately looked after and treated, but we don't have their skills. We're not specialists in family medicine. We're not a family doctor. We cannot provide the service to treat you appropriately and what you deserve. So this is not something we have to imagine. Unfortunately, this is something that we see on a daily basis. So it's your, it should be your expectation and your right to not be marginalized, to be able to have primary care access to a good family doctor who can take over that care. We can't do any of the counseling, any of the ongoing follow-up. Having cancer is confusing. It's difficult, it's hard to understand. You need someone to help you navigate that journey with you. Imagine you're in your 60s and you're on multiple medications. You haven't been able to get them filled because you have no family doctor. You're being unwell, you're getting unsteady on your feet, you trip and you fall, and you fracture your hip. Well, I'm an expert at helping with your fractured hip. I'm an expert at helping you get the urgent services for that. But again, unfortunately, this fall is preventable. This yes. admission to hospital and fractured hip is preventable yes. if you had good access to a family doctor. Yes. The erosion of family medicine and family doctors has been going on for over 20 years. Exactly. This is a long-term problem that needs quick solutions, unfortunately. Yes. I'm not in the solutions game. I was just hoping, I was hoping just to outline today with a few vignettes of the impact of not having a family doctor has on the impact you have for your urgent and emergent needs when you come to an emergency department anywhere in British Columbia. So I'm hoping that movements like this can force government to take responsibility. <laughs> that they can begin to work collaboratively amongst themselves and to work with family doctors and the professionals providing the care to find solutions.